Okay, so welcome to this next video in the Theory of Probability playlist. So, uh, now that we've done a basic introduction of conditional variance, what we're going to look at is, just as in the case of conditional expectation, where instead of conditioning on a simple event in the discrete probability space, what you can now condition on is the value of a random variable. That's what we're going to look at, at in this video. Basically, we're going to look at conditional variance, where we condition on the value of a random variable. Okay, so let's have a look at, uh, let's imagine that we have an abstract probability space here, which has two random variables on it. So it has an x random variable, which describes every outcome values in the real line, and then a y random variable which again ascribes every, um, every outcome a point in the real line. So every outcome is mapped onto an x value and a y value. Then what we are in a position to do is define the joint random variable, x and y, which will map every outcome not onto a single real number now, but onto an ordered pair of real numbers. And the way it's going to work is that x, um, comma y is going to map every outcome onto the ordered pair, which is x of s, uh, with y of s, basically. So every outcome is going to be mapped onto an ordered pair by this joint random variable. Okay, right. So, um, what we can now consider doing is taking uh, the variance of, a, of the random variable y. So we can take the variance of the random variable y where we condition on the value of x. So we can condition on big X equaling some value little a. So basically, what this means is this joint random variable is going to map you all, every, every outcome is going to be mapped onto a point in R2. What we are now doing is we are saying, OK, we're going to condition on the event that x is equal to a. So basically, if we draw this vertical line down, that is the event that x is equal to a. All the points on that line is the event that x is equal to a. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, that event has happened. And we are now going to condition on, that it, on it having happened. So we're going to pull it out of the larger probability space. We're going to do away with the larger probability space. And we're going to consider this line, this vertical line, which is the line that x is equal to a, as the whole probability space now. So we are promoting it up from being just an event, being a subset of our original large probability space to now being a, a probability space in its own right. Now, the random variable y is still defined on this probability space. So this is the probability space that x is equal to a. So what we can do is we can restrict this random variable y down to x is equal to a. So that's what that means, y restricted to x is equal to a. And basically, it's just going to map every point on here to the same value that y originally mapped it onto. OK, so it's still going to map you onto re the real line, basically. Now, I should, I should state that, you know, really, we're not pulling out the real line. We're pulling out uh, the pre-image of the real of that um, of that line x is equal to a in our abstract probability space. So in our abstract probability space over here, there are a bunch of points. There are a bunch of outcomes basically, which were all mapped onto that line where x is equal to a. Which means basically that the x random variable mapped them onto that value little a. So basically, this is all points, all outcomes which uh, were mapped onto a by x. We could put this as the pre-image of a under the random variable x. So basically, this random variable x ascribes every outcome in this probability space a number. We are now looking at all the outcomes that were ascribed to the number a by that random variable x, basically. OK, and that's what this set is equal to. And basically, what we're really doing when we condition on the event that x is equal to a is we're conditioning on that event, OK? So we're conditioning on all these outcomes that had, uh, that had x value a. And that's why I think it's quite important to say that because... The, well, this is why I think it's quite important to say that. Because I've drawn us pulling this line out. But the reality is 
that there may not be points in here corresponding to every point on this vertical line. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So for instance, I might look at the point A and then the Y value is 4, but there might actually be no point in this abstract probability space that was actually mapped onto the X value A and the Y value 4. So some of the points on this line might be missing, however some, some of them will be present. Well, we, they might not be present, there might be no points in this entire probability space that were mapped onto the value of X equal to A, in which case it's a boring example, but let's assume there are. Uh, what I'm saying is that not it's not necessary for all of this line um, to actually be have points corresponding in the original actual probability space which um, which were mapped onto that point. Okay, regardless of that, some of the points in this vertex, if if you do have points which are mapped onto an x value of a, then they will be somewhere upon this line. So um, drawing it like this is kind of convenient. So, uh, now what, what we are, are looking at is that they still have a y value attached to them. So every point in here which had an x value equal to a has a y value attached to it as well. So basically, it's perfectly valid to say, okay, uh, we still have this function y uh, just restricted to x is equal to a, which is going to map every point in here onto a y value. And basically, either that y, either this, um, this may well be a discrete probability, um, well, this may well be a discrete random variable now, so there may well be a discrete number of points in here, in which case this becomes a discrete random variable, or it may still be a continuum here, so it will be a continuous random variable. In either case, what you can find is the conditional probability mass function for this restricted random variable, or you can find the conditional uh, probability density function in the case that it's continuous. The point is that you can find the way that this is distributed. You can find the di probability distribution for this random variable. And then when I say take the variance of that, all I mean is take the variance of that. So this is just this random variable. Don't read more into it than that. It is just this random variable. That's exactly what it is. We're just taking the variance of the random variable y restricted to x is equal to a, which is just this random variable. It's just a, uh, a lot of notation for, for this name here. It's just the name of a random variable from this set onto here. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say conditioning on the value of another random variable. So if we have two random variables defined on a probability space, we can basically condition on the value of one of them, and we can get the variance of the other conditioned on that value of the, of the first. Okay, now, similar to in the case of conditional expectation, it is notationally convenient to define a random variable, which is the variance of y given x. And I'm going to tell you exactly what this means to call this a random variable. It is notationally convenient to think of it as a random variable. And basically it's going to map you onto the real line. And the way it's going to work is it's going to take any outcome. So I need to tell you, if it's a random variable, I just need to tell you exactly where it's going to map any outcome onto. So basically it's going to take any outcome and it's going to map it basically onto the value of this variance where instead of putting in a, you substitute in what the x value of this uh, outcome is basically. So you take your outcome, you map it onto its x value, so you get x of s, and then you say, what, should the what is the variance in the value of the random variable y conditioned on the x value equaling the value uh, of x that was ascribed to that outcome s. So basically you map it onto the variance of y given that x is equal to now a constant which is x of s and that's what is meant by thinking of this as a random variable. So basically just to review it again, you take an outcome let's say I'll draw a picture. You take an outcome that will have some x value and it will have some y value. So here it is, x of s and y of s, okay? You then say, okay, I'm going to condition on the event, uh, which is the event that 
uh, the x value is equal to that value x of s. So I'm going to look at this event, x is equal to x of s. So any point which is in that event will be on this pink line. This pink line might not be the, you know, not every point on this pink line that I haven't covered in pink yet. But uh, this pink line, not every point on this pink line will necessarily have an outcome in the original abstract probability space which corresponds to it. But any outcome that is in the event that x is equal to x of s will be on that pink line. And then you say, okay, consider this sub um, subset of the whole probability space as your now whole probability space. Condition on that and find the variance of the random variable y where it is restricted to the, um, the poor pieces of this, um, of this vertical line that are actually in um, the probability, that actually have a point in the uh, abstract probability space that corresponds to them and map your outcome onto that value, basically. So you look at the x value uh, that's described to your outcome, and you calculate what variance, what is the variance of that, um, of the y uh, vari random variable, given that the x uh, coordinate is equal to uh, the x value that was ascribed to that outcome.